Hi, this is Avira from Scrappy Mania, and today in my episode of What's in My Stash, I want to go ahead and use these Heidi Swap Color Shine. Now, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I want to create flowers, you know, I'll stamp them all out and then I watercolor color them, but um, it, it could be tedious. Sometimes I want a really quick project. I want to get some flowers out, but I don't want to spend the time in fussy cutting coloring them with watercolor and all that stuff so I do have these heartfelt creations I got a lot of these um, in my stash and they have the stamp plus the die and then I decided to do um, and, and the idea came from another project that I did so um, I have a, a video in where I created a nice layout using those flowers and then I just spritz on a piece of paper and use my dye, these are my anagriffin dyes, to cut out leaves. Well, then that gave me an idea why won't, um, that I can use, let's say I want to have the outline like this, you have nice little outlines on your petals and, and stuff like that, that um, I want to do that, I want to use these stamps, but I don't necessarily want to spend the time coloring it, so how about if I stamp this with the stamp and then use my die to cut, cut, cut them out or even my scan and cut to cut them out, will that work? So that's what I want to try today. Now I'm going to make, this is what I'm going to use in a second, but I want to show you how I created the, that, that sheet with just regular um, cardstock. So you got to use a nice dirty cardstock. Now if you don't want this color to be all over, the, all over the place, you need a sturdy box. So this came with a 12 by 12 um, kit that I bought some time ago at HSN, but any box will work. You want to have nice sides so that way it doesn't spray all over your area. These have, because they have mica powders, they have like a little metal bowl in there and you want to shake these up really good. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of this at the end but let's go ahead and use this and hopefully it's not clogged. Sometimes what I was having issues with these is that they will clog easily. And that's why I haven't used them very much because they get clogged. Let me see if I can unclog it. Yeah, so let me see if I can unclog it. They say to put soak it in alcohol, so let me do that, and I'll be back. Okay, so I still have them soaking, but I found these color, um, mini misters that I bought some time ago. So I'm going to just put a little bit here on the mini mister. And hopefully it will work. Yeah, it works. So, I got a purple one. And then I'll clean it out. Because these, you know, I'll just clean out my Minimister. So, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this there. And that's like a little color there so let's go ahead and dry it and I'm gonna see if I can use some red so let me get another mini mister let's test it out make sure it works yep and just And look how pretty that works. That looks okay. And let me dry this. And look at that. Really nice. Let's do another one. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one. This time I'm going to start off with some red. I do like these color mist. I like, I like the shine and they make beautiful flowers, especially if you stamp on top of them. And look how pretty the, this one actually came out. 
it just and you got to make sure that they dry completely before you start stamping on them okay so let me show you how it looks this will make some pretty little flowers so let me put this aside and let it dry and I shall be back I'm gonna clean these so um, the trick for these these things or these misters is you have to keep them with just rinse them out use it put a little bit of your color shine or whatever rinse them out and then put water in it and keep it like this otherwise they clog up pretty bad as you can see these clogged up really bad and that's one reason why I stopped using these because they were so easily clogged that I was always struggling to unclog it but um, I discovered just to have the little ones put a little bit in there and then when you're done just rinse this completely out and um, store it that way so let me do that before all this gets clogged up and I'll be back okay so the next thing once it's completely dry we want to iron it out because see how it's wrinkled and we want a really nice impression so I have this craft iron I bought a long time ago but you can get any kind of iron from um, those travel irons work well or you can go to the Goodwill store and get an old iron use that this one it keeps pulling out from the cord so um, I got a really good price I bought it at a scrapbooking store I would say about 20 years ago and um, it's a Heidi Swap when she was selling those rhinestones that had hot glue you know there were hot fix hot fix or something like that rhinestones and um, she came out with the rhinestones and the iron I don't think that had a lot of that 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 product from her didn't really get a lot of um, calling or, or it wasn't really used that much because I remember I don't even remember her um, advertising that product I just saw this little cute iron at a craft store and got it the the only thing I don't like it too much this thing keeps pulling out so it's not very good because it pulls out but it's very it gets hot enough so it's it's good enough but I wish this thing didn't keep coming out because I got to keep pushing it in it would have been better if they would have just affixed that to the little iron then having it come off but see how nice and straight is getting once you iron it really good this is a piece of wood that I cover with fabric and it's my craft um, little ironing board that I use it's kind of nice and portable and since I, I mainly just use it for little cards a little embellishments or for paper like this see it keeps coming out I don't like that it's not a good iron if you find it will a good price then I will recommend buying it but not if not don't buy it if you if it's between this type of iron with the removable cord versus a regular travel mini travel iron I would just pick the travel iron you can find them at the Goodwill store because I've bought some travel irons before. They don't last very long, but I've bought some travel irons before from the Goodwill store, a couple of bucks, and it's good enough. Okay, so that's done for that. So let me put the iron away. Okay, and I'm going to put this away. So now we're ready to go into the stamping part. So I'm going to bring a stamping cushion. And then I have my stamping block here. Oh, and notice this stamping block, how dirty it is? I'm going to show you how you can clean it. So if you have rubbing alcohol, you can buy these alcohol for CVS, so I bought a bottle and I just refill it. If you put alcohol on here, you take a rag. I like to use these old t-shirts. That way I don't use too much paper towel and, you know, less paper towel in the landfill. 
So you clean it up and see how easy it cleans. Look at that. Cleans very easily. Put some on this side. I was wondering those crafters you'll see on YouTube and their blocks are pristine. And I was wondering why how did they get their blocks so looking so nice when all my blocks I just use it a couple of times and they look they have ink all over, especially when I use stays on. Well, this is how they I think this is how what they do. They clean it with alcohol. And look, it's nice and clean. See how clean it is? Just wanted to give you that tip in case you want, you have ugly little blocks and you want to make them nicer. Okay, so now I'm going to bring my stamp. And for this, I'm going to use my Versa, VersaFine Clear, and this is my favorite stamp pad so far. Stamp this, and I basically want to stamp more of the smaller the smaller ones, these smaller leaves. These smaller ones. So I like to create, when if I'm doing this, I like to create a whole page worth of leaves and I like to create more than what I need because that way I can always, later on, um, I can always pull these to create a card when I need a, a quick card. Maybe I ran out of a sentiment, some kind of sentiment card. I try to keep most of them, but sometimes I, you know, I run out. So um, this is a good technique. You just, on your spare time, if you have any. Just make a bunch of these, cut them out, put them in a little container, and then you have them for the future. And also, it's great when you get together with friends and you are crafting. Get any more. So I'm going to let this dry. Let me clean my stamps, and I shall be back. Okay. I'm just going to cut one out and show it to you. So let's cut one out. Look how beautiful that looks. It has some different colors because of some areas have, um, you know, because it, it, we are spraying the ink. Some areas may not fully get sprayed or you'll have the, that nice kind of texture. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Let me go ahead and run it through real quick. It doesn't seem like it cut. Let's see. Oh, it did cut. It did cut. But not all the way through. I think some areas here didn't cut all the way through. So I'm going to add my shim. And this time it will cut all the way through. So one thing I want to tell you about, see the different noise? So it's cutting through. One thing to know about any die cutting machine is that you want to cut it out first with the least amount of plates and shims 
and then if it didn't cut like you saw that then you add one shim so look how beautiful that cut so you can put this against a flower like so and it looks very nice and it's nice and flat like these flowers are nice and flat and this is flat and you can do the same thing with these type of flowers as well so they look pretty nice so I hope you liked this video and I gave you some ideas in how you can go ahead and take out some of those color shine that you have or those ink sprays that you have you can spritz the whole page and then just stamp it and cut it out and there you have flowers pretty easy and quick and not having to blend too much. So I hope you like this video and thank you for watching. Bye now.